Tony, it's wonderful to have you. Fantastic. Have you here, here in Poland for the first time? This is what I no, well, heard. First time playing. First, first time playing. First time playing. I've been okay. in Poland a lot, uh -huh. actually, but on the borders because the I live in Germany, and East Germany, of course, borders Poland. And I know a lot of people that drive over to Poland to buy cheap cigarettes and fill up their car with gas. So mm -hmm. I've been in Poland a few times. I've never been to Warsaw, and I've certainly never played here. How did you know that? Because that little movie I made, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not yet, yet, yet. Uh, Tony, I'd like to ask you a couple of uh, questions, if you don't mind. Questions? Yes, that's going to be an interview. <laughs> sign up. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, Tony, you're also a, a music producer, uh, and you produced such um, pieces from uh, Joe Cocker, Eric Barden, or John Mayo. Uh, do you like to listen to blues music? Um, I need to listen to blues music. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you, I'm not a, I'm not really a rock guy. Mm -hmm. I never was. I come from California in the, in the poor uh, agricultural area, and not far from Bakersfield. And there's a big country scene in Bakersfield. It's Buck Owens and Mel Haggard. And you might not know these people, but they're country legends, American country legends. And I never really played any rock music. Uh, until actually, until 1975, and then I played rock music for three years. I mean, hard, hard rock music. And then after that, I didn't really play anymore. I'm not really, really a rock guy. Um, I like all kinds of music as long as it's good. I love blues. I, uh, most rock is blues. Um, early rock, Zeppelin, uh, Purple. Uh, not Sabbath so much, but a lot of English rock, uh, the Allman Brothers, uh, it's American, uh, is actually blues. It's, it's uh, they, they took what old black blues men wrote, stole it, changed it around, put on nice clothes, and all make uh, got, uh, turned into millionaires, and they gave the guy that actually created the music a uh, a bottle of whiskey and said, "Go home." Thanks very much. Is that pure vodka? Is that, is that, is that Polish vodka? <laughs> right. Pure water. Okay. Was that a confusing answer? But no. I like I like mm -hmm. any kind of music that's good, mm -hmm. and I do trust myself to know what's good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's subjective, but that, yeah, I trust my own opinion. Okay. What kind of film music do you like the most? Because Romantic, mm -hmm. okay. uh, symphonic, okay. with, with a lot of uh, orchestral. Mm -hmm. uh, Hans Zimmer or James Newton Howard, the big Hollywood stuff. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you get people like, um, what's the guy from Nine Inch Nails? I forget his name. You know who I mean. Uh, he, he does some, some, some big films. What's the guy from Nine Inch Nails? What's his name? Trent Reznor. Huh? Fred Reznor. Oh. Uh, he he also does thank you. He also does some some film music. That Sorry I'm... for interrupting. Oh, what a yeah. lovely man! Oh, thank covers you. up covers up the taste of the vodka. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But the film music that I did uh, was pretty much electronic, and um, I did 
five, six movies been in, in for German release in the uh, 80s and 90s, and they were a lot of synthesizers, very moody. Try to, I mean, film music is a thing. You, you get a you get a piece of film, and you just try to not get in the way, but still be cool. And because they were also released as albums, so they couldn't be too innocent. You know, they had, they had some some power to them. So it's a, it's, a, it's a line you walked, and I did my best at it. And in fact, I had my two biggest hits in Germany were both from films. Uh, one of them is a, uh, both of them are actually enormous hits, so I was completely surprised because they were only hits in Germany. And the rest of my hits were in America, and uh, the Americans don't know these songs. Uh, Tony, when you left uh, from Rainbow, you made a Planet P project? Came later. What I did was, and actually I left. Um, I had a turbulent relationship with uh, Richie. I loved him on stage. We didn't get along off stage. And he fired me three times and hired me back three times. And the fourth time I just left. I was, I said, I don't need this. And I, and I, that's a story in itself. I left in the middle of uh, Long Live Rock and Roll. I <clears throat> waited about six months. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was young. I was very young. I was 20, no, 22, just 22. And I got an offer to go to Germany to play, just play on somebody's record, which I took. Sure. And I went and uh, didn't go home ever. I've been there 45 years. And... Um, um, I started off making, I wasn't sure if I was going to sing. I didn't know I was a singer and I didn't know I was a songwriter. So I started making, so what they called Europop at the time. It was like Kraftwerk or Tangerine Dream or Can. This was 1979, 80. And these are synthesizers, drum machines, just, just experimenting. And, um, Eventually, so I was making demos for a girl band that somebody else was producing. And one of them was a, a song called I Won't Be Home Tonight. And I took it to a friend of mine who was a producer and to play him these, for this girl band. And he listened to it and he says, that's not, for, that's not a demo, that's a single, that's for you. And that was later number one in American rock charts. And, and then I said, okay, maybe I'll sing. And then mm -hmm. uh, by that time, I had made five instrumental records and released them. And I was having fun. There was not much money in that, but I didn't care. It was, you know, no kids yet. And um, uh, then I got a solo deal and started making uh, Tony Carey solo albums. I made uh, two of those. And then Planet P Project uh, was just... An idea that I had to make to do something that was completely different. I'm, I, my, 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 my solo albums, Tony Carey albums, are, are stories. They're stories. And Planet P is science fiction. Mm -hmm. or, uh, it, it evolved, but at the mm -hmm. beginning it was, it was science fiction. And so I was in an unbelievable position of having two record deals with two major labels in America. But on Planet P Project, I wasn't allowed to use my face or my name because MTV was just coming. And so I was on MTV about half the, half the day because I had enormous singles, my videos, and then a song called Why Me from Planet P Project was an enormous video and it was, it was on all the time. But nobody knew it was me. And uh, in the 40 years since then, there have been six other, there have been seven Planet P albums now, okay. and 35 Tobin Carey albums. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. And five film soundtracks. Sounds okay. okay.
during your school years, yeah. uh, you uh, you played um, the songs of Mamas and Papas and the Doors. Yeah. Um, does it happen to you recently that you listen that kind of music or you play that kind of music? Um, I've stolen so much from Ray Manzarek, the keyboard player for the mm -hmm. Doors. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of musicians who play fast. I don't play fast. And I'm going to give you a quote from David Gilmour. He says, I never was able to play fast. I had to compensate by playing well. Mm -hmm. Ray Manzarek was the same. He was, I loved him. The, my, the, first, the first organ I ever got, I was 14. And my whole repertoire, all the songs I knew were the first two Doors albums. And uh, I had a little band in my living room and, and all we played was the, 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 the Doors. I've, my style owes so much to Ray Manzarek. Was very melodic. A little bit bluesy, a lot of swing, and um, um, not do this, not this, do the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd be more of the David Gilmore school than the Keith Emerson school. Mm -hmm. you know? My favorite keyboard player is Rick Wright. He played mm -hmm. Pink Floyd. That's my favorite band too. Mm -hmm. And they. They play so slow, they drive you crazy. But that keeps tension. It keeps the, um, the German Spannel. Uh, Spannel. You know I mean? Yeah. And that keeps the tension going. You're, you're waiting, for, and, and, it's, and it's, it's a very subtle buildup, like a good movie, like a Hitchcock movie. And then you find people, I don't ever talk badly about anybody, but well, sometimes I do. Uh, but I won't today. Uh, I see a lot of guitar players playing, and keyboard players too, playing, for my taste, too many notes, much too fast. Much too fast. And they just, you don't get any power. A note has power. One note has power. Mm -hmm. Look at Rick Wright, look at Pink Floyd, look at, look at Wish You Were Here. It's, it's 14 minutes long and, and he does his little, in the beginning he goes bum, 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 before the guitar comes in. And, and, and he's just one chord he's holding on the organ, and he's got this, Utterly simple synthesizer mm -hmm. solo that any child could play. It's magical. And it makes, well, they sold 200 million albums. I'm saying I'm not the only one that thinks that. And then you see people, and mm -hmm. the, the power of, mm -hmm. the power, don't underestimate mm -hmm. the power of one mm -hmm. So it's not about the speed, it's about the, the detention. Mm -hmm. like, like with so many things. <laughs> It's not how fast you do it, it's how, it's how well you do it. Okay, I will translate it to the gentleman later on, if you don't mind. Okay. Are you, you going to try to voice over all this? Uh, pardon? Are you going to try to do a voice over? Um, I, I, maybe subtitle, I, I, we'll yeah. see, we'll see, we'll see how it, how it flies. Okay. I'll, just, I'll have to step up my game here, I'll have to try to speak more complicated, so give you, really give you a lot of trouble. Oh. All right, okay, go ahead. That's fine. How did you recall Ronnie Dio? Ronnie Dio? Yeah, what, what are you, what are your thoughts? I loved him. He was 13 or 14 years older than I was. Let's see, I was, I was 21, he was 34. 13, 13 or 14 years old. He was the nicest guy, man. He was, the thing is, we were both American in a British group. The group was Cozy Richie, Jimmy Bain. And it's a Scotsman, two Englishmen. And it was me and Ronnie. And, and the road crew was also, this is very important, the road crew was also uh, Ronnie's old road crew from Elf. And uh, they're, they're all from upstate New York, a town called Cortland, New York, that I know. And it's very, it's kind of rural, uh, uh, down to earth, like New York people are, Italian, down to earth, like they are. And I loved Ronnie. He was, he was like, he never had a bad word to, for me ever. He was always ready to listen. He was just a funny guy. I just, I that was great. And then, and then of course the voice. You know, that's the, but that the, the voice is just the that's the bonus. 
but the person is important you know you have to the person's got to be there and to communicate with and then and then the, the, the talent is well I knew I knew I knew it was something very special Okay. And what are you looking forward to tonight, to, to, to tonight's concert? Well, I don't, uh, what are your expectations, your thoughts? I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a tribute to John Lord, and uh, who was one of the nicest people I ever met in my life. So I would do it anyway. I'm doing it because Doogie's doing it. But uh, no, that's kind of a joke. I, 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 I very, very rarely play rock. Mm -hmm. And this is, I'll be playing Hammond organ and some synthesizer, and we're going to be doing Stargazer and Terror Woman mm -hmm. and a lot of songs that I, the first time I played them, I played them in 1975. And, um, you know, that's almost, it's almost 50 years ago. And one thing about me is I don't do well playing other people's material. But if I recorded it originally, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll play it. Uh, if you ask me, but Doogie's got a, I saw you interviewing him, he's got a completely different job. Mm -hmm. He's got to come into a band and learn their repertoire mm -hmm. and, and this and that. I c couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I, could, I mean, I could never play anything that John Ward played. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't play anything that I play. I mean, not with his heart, you know, maybe with the fingers, yeah, mm -hmm. sure, but, but not mm -hmm. with his heart. So I don't play covers. It's kind of mm -hmm. a, a cover cover versions. I, I really only play what either really touches me, then I play it my way anyway, or uh, things something I wrote or something I I, I, I recorded mm -hmm. originally. So we're gonna do, I think six or seven songs, and um, together. Uh, Dude, he's an old friend. He's a Great singer. I love the guy. My wife loves the guy. We, mm -hmm. He's just terrific. He's so good at him. He's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. These kids, these, uh, this, this band, kid, this, 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 uh, <laughs> these young men are good. We played with them last night. It's going to be fine. I've never seen the venue. I don't have no idea what to expect other than we'll have fun. And, um, yeah. Okay, so I wish you a wonderful concert tonight, wonderful atmosphere. Yeah. I hope you have fun. I hope it will not be too fast, but the, the, keeping the, the tension you were, we were talking about. That's great. That's great. <laughs> and my, have a part, lovely... my part won't be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> about the other guys. Mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still. <laughs>